What's up everyone? Welcome to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be going over seven ad group best practices for Google ads. So as you're setting up your ad groups, some of the different things to keep in mind to make sure that you're getting the most out of your campaign. So I'm going to get right into it. The two examples I'm going to be using today is I'm going to be using my website farmhousegoals.com and then I'm also going to be using nike.com because they have some really good examples here where I can use their website to show you how I would set up ad groups if I was setting up ads for nike.com. So we're going to come back over here and when you're in your Google ads account, you're setting up your campaigns. The main thing you want to do when you're setting up ad groups is you want to create a different ad group for each landing page on your website where you want to send traffic to. So that's going to be number one is to make sure you understand that your ad groups should really be focused on landing pages. So if I come down here, you're going to see I have six different ad groups here in this campaign. You would want to have a lot more ad groups. This is just an example campaign that I've created. I'm going to have a Google ads course out where I show you exactly how I'm going to set up a campaign for farmhousegoals.com and it's going to end up having over a hundred ad groups. So the more ad groups, the better. And the way you should kind of think about ad groups is can I send this to a unique landing page? So just to use these three for an example, you're going to see farmhouse sinks, stainless steel, farmhouse sinks and farmhouse copper sinks. Rather than sending all of them to the same landing page with a huge list of farmhouse sinks, I can make sure that when someone is looking specifically for stainless steel or copper, I'm sending them to the best possible landing page. So if I come over here to my website and I come to the shop page, what you can see here is farmhouse Christmas decor. So let's say I want to add that to my campaign. What I would do is I would create an ad group for this landing page, farmhouse Christmas decor. And then on this page, each individual category here, so farmhouse Christmas garlands, ornaments, pillows, Christmas signs, stockings, tree skirts, trees, and wreaths. So all of these different categories, I would create separate ad groups for. So that's really how I think about ad groups is which landing page am I sending traffic to? And then even if I come back over to ad groups here and you're gonna see farmhouse shelves are here. So I'm gonna come back one level. And if I come into my shop and I scroll down, you're gonna see farmhouse shelves right here. So if I click on this, if I'm adding things like farmhouse floating shelves, farmhouse shelf brackets, wall shelves, shelves with hooks and coat hooks. So instead of putting all of these into one individual ad group, what I would do is I would set up six different ad groups and I would send traffic to each of these different landing pages. So when someone types in farmhouse coat hooks, when someone types in floating shelves, when someone's looking specifically for shelf brackets, all these different things, I want to make sure that I'm sending them to the page that has a list of products that's going to match exactly what they're looking for. To use Nike as an example, if I come over here, you're going to see all these different types of shoes they have down here to the left hand side. So let's just say, for example, someone is looking for golf shoes and let's say they're looking for black Nike golf shoes. I would send them directly to this landing page where the color is specifically for black golf shoes and it's on the Nike website, obviously. Now, let's say on the other hand, someone's looking for white Nike golf shoes then I can just select white here and then I want to make sure that I'm sending people to this landing page so that all the products that they're seeing are going to be the white Nike golf shoes. So this is a great way to kind of organize your campaigns. And if someone's looking for basketball shoes, running shoes, lifestyle shoes, the different colors that we have here, I would make sure that I'm sending them to those types of landing pages. And the only way to make sure that you're doing that is by setting up different ad groups here. So as you come in here and you create new ad groups, what you would want to do is make sure each individual ad group. So if we come down here, we're going to use a standard ad group, keep scrolling down. You can make sure that your next ad group, if I did farmhouse Christmas decor, then I would set up different ad groups for all these different categories here. And the same thing if you're doing it for shoes or for any of the business services that you offer, you want to make sure that you're looking at the different landing pages where you're sending traffic to. And that's how you want to set up your ad groups and to group them together by theme to keep things as organized as possible. So that's going to be number one. Okay, now number two is going to be a pretty short one, but if I just come over to keywords here for my campaign, what I would recommend is using less keywords in each individual ad group. So right now I'm targeting all broad match modifier keywords and each ad group is just targeting one keyword. So for farmhouse cabinets, I'm just targeting the broad match modifier version of farmhouse cabinets, farmhouse shelves, same exact thing. So if you want to expand your campaign a little bit, I would recommend these broad match modifier keywords. If you want to keep things really targeted and really relevant, I would recommend using exact match keywords. You could also incorporate phrase match keywords as well, but I would just choose one. I think broad match modifier is going to give you a little bit more volume and it's going to match your keywords to a lot of different searches that are going to have the same intent. So if someone comes in and types in rustic shelves or rustic shelf or farmhouse shelf for sale. 
I'm still gonna match those different keywords. So that's kind of how I have it set up. But number two, the main thing is use less keywords per ad group. And it kind of goes along with number one. So for example, if I come in here to the farmhouse shelves, rather than targeting farmhouse floating shelves, farmhouse shelf brackets, all in the same ad group, what you'd be better off doing is, again, creating more ad groups and then targeting less keywords in each individual ad group because it allows you to send people to the best landing pages for the products and services that they're looking for. And it also allows you to create the most targeted advertisements possible. So that's gonna be number two is less keywords per ad group and use single keyword ad groups if it works the best for your campaign. Okay, now number three is, let's just use this example here for the farmhouse sinks. I have stainless steel, I have copper, and then I just have a broad farmhouse sinks here. What you wanna do is use bids and use negative keywords to avoid too much crossover in your different ad groups. So Google is really good at handling a lot of this to make sure that you don't have a, a ton of the same keywords going into multiple ad groups. But let's just say, for example, I was targeting farmhouse sinks here. This is the most broad version of this keyword. So this keyword right here, farmhouse sinks, is still gonna match when someone types in copper farmhouse sinks and stainless steel farmhouse sinks. So what I can do is I can try to bid slightly lower on the broader versions of these keywords, and it would go the same thing with farmhouse shelves. So the same examples that I've been using, if I'm bidding on farmhouse shelves and then I incorporate floating shelves, wall shelves, uh, maybe shelves with hooks, what I can do is make sure that the most broad version of the keyword that I'm targeting, so farmhouse shelves, which would match all of those different search terms, or farmhouse sinks, which would match these different types of search terms as well, I can make sure I'm bidding slightly lower on this individual keyword. And then what I can also do is if I come into my ad groups here, I can go over to farmhouse sinks. So I can click on farmhouse sinks here and then come up to negative keywords and make sure that if I come in here, I add an ad group negative keyword. So I can say add a new negative keyword, ad group. And what I can do is just something like the phrase match stainless steel. Maybe if someone types in steel at all, if someone types in stainless at all. So I can enter these as negative keywords. These don't necessarily need to be phrase match keywords, but, but you could just add these as negative broad match keywords, just like that. And then the other thing I can do is just enter copper here. So I can just enter these as negative keywords and it's gonna avoid too much crossover. And when someone does type in these keywords, I wanna make sure that I'm using the other ad groups and make sure that those other advertisements are showing. So if someone's searching specifically for copper farmhouse sinks, I want them to see my copper farmhouse sink ads and I want them to go to the best possible landing pages. So this is one way to handle this is to use ad group level negative keywords in your broad ad groups and you can also bid slightly lower if you are using manual bidding so i would just come in here to negative keywords click on save and it's really that simple so that's gonna be number three to avoid too much crossover make sure you understand adding ad group negative keywords is a great way to keep your campaigns as organized as possible Okay, next is gonna be number four. And number four is gonna be in each ad group, you should have two to four advertisements. And what I would recommend doing is using at least one expanded text ad and at least one responsive search ad. So if I come in here to this ad group, what you can do, what you can see is the keyword that I'm bidding on, but I wanna to come to ads and extensions here. And you can see I'm using three different advertisements here. So I have an expanded text ad and then I have two responsive search ads. So what you can do is create at least two advertisements in each ad group. Really what you wanna do is create three to four advertisements. The more advertisements you have, the better that Google ads will be able to optimize your campaigns because over time, the ads that perform the best for your campaign. So if we just come over here, you can see this one has spent $4.58 and it sent two conversions at the lowest possible cost. So if you have ads that are performing better than your average cost per conversion, better conversion rate and higher click-through rates, then over time, Google is gonna continue to serve those ads more often. So you can see right here, these advertisements have been served pretty similar amount of times overall. So as you start getting more and more data for your campaign, what's gonna happen is you're gonna have ads that essentially beat the other advertisements in terms of performance, and Google Ads is gonna be able to optimize the advertisements that you've created to continue to improve your campaign over time. And the only way they can really do that is if you're creating multiple ads in each individual ad group and making sure that your ads are really matching the keywords that you're targeting. So those are two things right here is make sure you're creating really targeted advertisements and you have two to four ads in each individual ad group, I would recommend using a combination of responsive search ads and expanded text ads, just like I have here. 
Now, number five, something you can do to take it a step further is if you do have multiple landing pages on your website that you want to test against each other. So let's just use this for the same exact example. What you can do is create two advertisements. So one expanded text ad and one responsive search ad and send the traffic for those advertisements to one individual landing page on your website. So if we look at this responsive search ad right here and we click on edit, what you're going to see is the final URL is going to be this farmhousegoals.com slash farmhouse shelves. So if I come over to that landing page, this is what it looks like. It's really more of a blog style post. So people come in here, there's a lot of different farmhouse shelves for sale and people can look through the entire blog post and hopefully find something that will fit the best for their home. Now, if I come back over here, what I can do is we're gonna come down here to cancel. So what you can see is with this responsive search ad right here, I've already duplicated it. So I've created the same exact advertisement. The only difference here is if we click down on this other responsive search ad and I click on edit, you're gonna see that this one is sending people to that product category farmhouse shelves on my website that I've showed a few times. So it's gonna be this page instead. So it's gonna be more of a shop page, more of an e-commerce looking page. So you can test multiple landing pages on your website if you have different landing pages. And all you need to do is if we come to cancel again here, I come to this expanded text ad and I click right here and do copy and edit. It's gonna create a brand new advertisement. So the current one is sending traffic to this page. So I can just come over here copy my landing page that I want to send traffic to, paste it right here, and then just click on save ad. So now we have four advertisements running in our ad group. And what you can see is two of them are sending traffic to one page, and then two of them are sending traffic to another page, but they're really just duplicate advertisements. So over time, what we're gonna be able to see is which landing pages are performing better based on the conversions that are being driven on our website. So another thing to take your ads a step further and to really improve your ad groups as well is to test different landing pages. If you have different landing pages that you've created for the offers that are being promoted on your website. Okay, so next is gonna be number six, and number six is gonna to be to use ad group level ad extensions. So if I come into my ad groups here, and we'll just use the same one that I've been using, so we click through here on farmhouse shelves. What we can do is if we come to ads and extensions and just come over here to extensions, you can see I have site link extensions that are made specifically for this ad group. So the more you can target your site link extensions for what people are looking for, the better your campaigns are gonna perform over time. So if we come back over here to Nike for an example again, let's just say we are using the golf shoes example. What we can do with site link extensions, so we come over here to the men's section and you can see shop collection, you can see golf. So let's just say we open golf here. What we can do is make sure we're using site link extensions like golf shoes, golf clothing, golf accessories, and then shop all golf. So rather than creating some really broad site link extensions for our entire campaign, so someone looking for golf shoes probably at that moment is not looking for basketball shoes or even running shoes. They're looking specifically for golf shoes. And then the other things that you wanna promote are some of the different types of golf products that they're also going to be interested in so hopefully you can get somebody that buys shoes buys clothing buys an outfit buys accessories so you can promote some of the other things on your website that are going to be highly related to the keywords that you're targeting so it's the same thing here with the shelves if I come over to shelves I can use all these different pages as site link extensions so then if someone is looking for something specific like farmhouse shelves with hooks I can make sure that I'm sending them to that landing page and they can see that option when they do see my advertisements so it's really just going to help with your overall ad relevance, which ultimately helps with your quality score. So that's going to be number six is to use ad group level ad extensions. And if we come over here to extensions and click on create, you can use all out extensions, structured snippet extensions. You can make sure that people are seeing the best possible advertisements based on the keywords that they're targeting. Okay, last but not least is gonna be number seven. And number seven is gonna to be to create less campaigns and create campaigns with more ad groups. So rather than creating 10 different campaigns, each having 10 ad groups, I would recommend trying to create just one campaign with 100 ad groups. So if I come in here to my campaign, the only reason that you would really wanna create separate campaigns is if we come over here to settings, locations are set at the campaign level. So if you're targeting different locations, then you do need to set up different campaigns. So for example, if I'm targeting Boston with one campaign, New York City with another campaign, then you are gonna have to set up multiple campaigns, especially if you wanna make sure that your offers are specific to the locations that you're targeting. The other reason that you would wanna create separate campaigns is budgeting. So if you wanna set a budget, for example, we come over here to Nike, let's say Nike only wants to spend a certain amount advertising shoes. 
then what they can do is they can come in here to shoes and they can set up one campaign specific for shoes and go through all these different shoes here and then create another one for clothing. So if they want to separate it out based on budget, so if they're saying, okay, we want to spend 70% of our budget on shoes and 30% on clothing, then what you would want to do is set up multiple campaigns. However, for the most part, if I'm creating a campaign for farmhousegoals.com, a search campaign, then what I would want to do is just create one campaign and just put all my different ad groups in that campaign. Because what we can do with bidding over time is use smart bidding to optimize for conversions in this campaign. So if we come here to bidding, right now I have it set up as enhanced CPC. But if I'm switching to a target CPA or target return on ad spend bid strategy, then what I can do is try to get the CPA down across my entire campaign. Now you can create portfolio strategies, you can set the same target CPA bidding strategies to multiple campaigns. However, I would recommend trying to keep as much as possible in one campaign, unless you do have to split it out due to location targeting or due to your budget for an individual campaign. So these are some ad group best practices, some things to keep in mind as you are setting up your campaigns. Again, I am gonna have a free Google Ads course coming out where I'm gonna show you exactly how to build a large campaign, some best practices throughout, but this is a great way to understand how to build campaigns and how to make sure your campaigns are as organized as possible. And the other thing you wanna do is once you do set up your ad groups, so we're gonna click on continue here, and we do set up our ad groups, you wanna keep them the same as much as you possibly can as you run your campaign. So unless you're splitting out some keywords into some new ad groups, I would recommend just trying to create as many ad groups as possible when you do set up your campaigns because it's gonna help you drive more and more conversions over the course of time. Now, if you have any questions about this, please leave them in the comments section. Thanks for watching my video today and make sure you subscribe to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel.